Well, hello. Welcome to Pink Boot Camp, you guys. This is National Sales Director Leah Lachlan, and this is one of four sessions that we have created for brand new consultants to, to basically get just your foundational training in. And we are just going to cover the basics in this video and in the following three videos. And once you finish those, the four videos total, and work through the workbook as you're watching the videos, you graduate from Pink Boot Camp. And it covers the just the basic training that you need in Mary Kay just to take the next step and get started. So when you finish these four sessions, you will by no means like be an expert or you will not have mastered the skills, um, but it's going to lay a good foundation of knowledge and training that you can then build upon and continue learning. Um, Mary Kay is just a lifelong education. There's always more to learn. There's always more skills to master or, or tighten up. And so this is just going to be a good start and lay a good foundation. And so this session is on booking and coaching, which are, are the first of, of really four skills, four primary skills that we develop in Mary Kay. It's booking, coaching, selling at mainly at the party and then recruiting and then there's some business management and or office organizational skills that will be important uh, to be able to run your business effectively and so that's what we're going to cover in in pink boot camp and we're going to start with booking coaching um, you can boot camp on my website on the same page that you can access these videos there's a pdf file of that workbook you can print it off. It's several pages long. Um, it's really beautiful, so print it in color if you can. And there's questions on the first page of each, each section. And then each section just has resources in it that I'm gonna talk about as we work through this. And I actually have one sitting right here. So I may be showing you certain pages um, and even screen sharing a couple of the pages as we work through this. So this is what it looks like. This is page one be a really helpful guide and resource for you as you work through, okay all right so let's get started with booking and coaching um we start with booking because that's really where it all starts you can't really coach a party until you've booked it you can't go sell product and talk to and you can't recruit people until you're in front of people and building a customer base and a team so it really does all start with booking um, and with booking I want to start with the mindset Mary Kay is 10% skill 90% your mindset in your head and your heart and so it's a pretty simple business once you've learned a few basic skills and practice them it, it's pretty simple like eyeshadow goes on your eyes and lipstick goes on your lips and <laughs> cheek color goes on your cheeks so it, it really is a simple business and I always say that, that if you can read you can do Mary Kay um, the middle part is fairly simple the more challenging part of our business is your head and your heart and the emotional management uh, of Mary Kay and so so that's why we're going to start with the mindset and we will start most talking about the mindset first and then going into the mechanical or the hard skills uh, that, that you'll also need to master and so I'll share with you my mindset when I got started as a consultant I, I really didn't believe people would want to hold parties um, positive or enthusiastic mindset about reaching out to people because I didn't want to be pushy I didn't want to ask too much I didn't want to put people on the spot and I felt like I was just asking to for them to book a party so I could get a party so I could sell product and I just didn't it just didn't settle right with me and so therefore because I had that sort of negative mindset communicated that initially and didn't get a lot of great results when I first started reaching out to friends and family because I was just sort of wishy-washy about it and I was thinking in my mind oh they're not going to be interested um, and so mindset and I had two two turning points that really helped me to overcome that and so let me share with you the first turning point that I had in my mindset and it was after I went to my first maybe five or six parties Okay, so I had my business debut. My director came to that. She helped me book some parties and get them on my date book. 
And then for my first like 30 days, I think I held five or six or so parties, give or take. And so I went to each of those parties and some went really well and some didn't go so well. At some parties I sold a lot and at some parties I didn't sell very much at all. So I had mixed results as far as sales went, but here was what, here was what was consistent. Everyone was really excited about it and they were like really happy after the party. And you know, sometimes I would go into a party and women would kind of be like this or like this. But then when I would leave, their shoulders were back and their heads were up and they were smiling and they were laughing and they felt more beautiful and they felt more confident. They could buy a lot of product or not. They really enjoyed the product. They loved getting together with their girlfriends and they loved that connection and kind of the girlfriend, girls night in atmosphere that we had at all the parties. And then every single party as I was paving, Everyone was saying, thank you for coming. This was so fun. I didn't think it would be so fun. We had such a great time. And they loved the prize. They loved how their faces looked. And it was just a really positive experience at all of these parties. And so after that happened, time after time after time, at my, within my, I had a mindset shift. And it dawned on me that I really had a service to offer to women. And I had something to give that was that was good. And I had a way to make them feel important and a way to make them feel more confident and feel beautiful. And when it dawned on me that I had a service to offer, all of a sudden I got a lot more excited about my business. Because it wasn't about what I went there to get. Because remember that felt icky. That didn't sit right with me. So what to get from, from parties it was about what I was going to give. And I just didn't realize until I actually got out in the field and held parties, what a gift I had to offer to women. I want a gift to offer to them and a service to offer that, that they wanted and that they would enjoy. It just totally transformed my excitement, my enthusiasm and my positivity about reaching out to people and sharing the gift that I felt that I had to offer, okay? And so if you haven't had that mindset shift, that I, I just wanted to share that in case it helps you to have that mindset shift, is that you really do have something to give. You have a wonderful product and a wonderful service as a beauty consultant to be in front of women, try products in a safe environment. They get to try them for free. They get your expertise and advice. And even if you don't know a lot about the products right now, you'll learn, you'll learn more about them. And you'll be able to recommend skincare products that work with some of their skin to be able to recommend colors that are going to work well with their eye color and their skin tone. And that's a service that they don't get at Walmart um, or Target or Kroger or wherever they buy their cosmetics. There's not something, it, it's not always a positive experience there, but we have that to give and to offer. Okay. So that was my first big turning point. And then my second turning point in, okay, because remember this, this video is all about booking. I had the second turning point with bookings and, and making phone calls to get bookings. And it was at my very first seminar that I attended. After being in Mary Kay for about five, recruiters me into going to Dallas at seminar. I'm so glad that they did because that's really where everything changed. And we don't have time for that story now, but you'll probably hear it later. But that's where my vision was really going to to really be all in for Mary Kay. That's when you know, things just changed. Um, but at that seminar, I got this idea that I was in a month. Okay, so to get 100 people to say no to me about a booking in a one month time frame. And I don't know why I just really latched onto this, but I'm like, okay, I'm gonna do that. And and that's what I did. So I printed off, off this, um, this sheet that had 100 little boxes on it. This is in your packet. And, and I literally, it was like this grid with a hundred little boxes. And as I was making booking calls, as I, as I would get no's, I would check the boxes off. And I was trying to get no's. And it was almost like reversing, like, I am very much a checklist person. I like to check things off. And so when I would get a no, instead of it feeling defeating and discouraging and feeling like rejection, I kind of got excited. 
and I would take my pin, I would check that box off, and guess what I would do? I would call the next person. I would pick the phone right back up and call them. And I would call them with a sense of accomplishment and excitement versus a sense of discouragement. And so what this did, this getting these 100 no's did, is it kept me asking. I kept calling. Whereas before, you know, I didn't know, I was just kind of chicken out on making the next call because I didn't want to experience that, that feeling again. It's actually not really reveal like a no is personal rejection, but my friends, it is not. I and mean, we've got to learn to not take that personally um, because not everyone is going to be interested. Completely unrealistic and it's impossible that everybody would be interested. And so when they say no, they're not saying no to you personally. They're just, it's not their thing. They're not interested. That's okay. Offer the gift to someone else. So we've got to understand that it's not personal which again it's going to feel like it. And so that experience helped me to understand that it's not personal rejection. And I ended up in no's that month. I didn't hit my 100, but I got 67. The most rejection I had ever received in one month in, in my life, the, that was the month we went on target for our car. And our team did 11,000 in production. It was the most successful month that I had in Mary Kay. Because along with those no's, came a lot of yeses too. You know, you're not hearing yes either because you're not asking. Okay, so let's let down the fear of hearing the no. It's not that bad, you guys. It's not the end of the world. Just pick up and call the next person. It's going to be okay. You are going to survive the no. <laughs> and just ask the next person. And also in that in the practice of getting 100 no's and calling and calling and calling again, the, the fear of booking lost its hold on me. Okay, I used to think the phone weighed like 10,000 pounds and it was like so heavy to pick it up and dial that number. But after I sort of habituated myself to that thing that I feared, the fear went away. And it lost its hold on me and it no longer had control or power over me because I just did it again and again and again. And to get rid of fear is to do the thing that you're afraid of. And that's how the fear goes away. You, you honestly don't often think yourself out of fear. We usually think ourselves into more fear, but it's action that quells the fear. It's the action. And as you guys, I could have woken up at 2 a.m. and picked up the phone and called somebody and went through my script and probably booked them. It, Lost, I lost the fear. It went away. I wasn't afraid to pick up the phone anymore. And I gained a lot of confidence and enthusiasm in what I was doing. So that when I did call, I often got more, more of those notes started turning into more yeses because of my confidence and my enthusiasm. Sometimes I would get a no and I would be surprised. She just said no. Like she doesn't even she doesn't even know what she's saying no to. Like, does she know who I am? She must not. <laughs> I'm just kidding. But I, I really built up that much confidence and that much belief in what I had to offer women that I thought they'd be crazy for saying no. Okay? So I hope that idea helps you. If you're afraid of me, feeling a little bit nervous about that, try to get 100 no's. Call enough people to get 100 no's and, um, like, watch out here. You, here you come because it's important to be uh, asking that many people. Okay? So those were my two big breakthroughs that helped me to overcome the fear and really shift my mindset. And so let's move on to our next topic, which is about some sort of, of habit where you're consistently adding parties to your date book. And I know that people get into Mary Kay for a lot of different reasons, but usually a common denominator in people who start their business is they want, want to make a little extra money or bring a little extra income in. Whether it's a lot or a little, most people would like to see a profit <laughs> and could think of something they could do with that profit that they're bringing into their family. And so I, what I strongly believe is you, if making a little extra money is that holding one party a week is going to allow you to do that on just such a nice, consistent basis. If you're holding one party a week or more, every week you can count on making some extra money. And you can count on bringing income in for your family. And so by holding one party a week, you guys, that means that 
there needs to be a little bit of a habit of adding parties to your date book. And so let me talk about what I mean by habit. Some people um, like to get one booking a day. Um, it's kind of like an apple a day keeps the doctor away. Booking a day can into and so uh, one booking a day. Some people like to book five new parties by Friday. Every Friday they meet at five noon. Some people book 15 minutes every day on their lunch break and just make a couple of calls on their lunch break and drive home from work, pull into their driveway and spend 15 minutes before they go into the house and enter the chaos that's happening at home. And so they get a couple of booking calls in before where it's gonna be more distractions. And so those are just a couple of examples of booking habits where you're doing something daily or weekly to be adding bookings to your date book and moving your business forward. Um, so if you wanna hold one a week, which is four in the month, you would need to book eight. The Mary Kay is usually half of what you book is going to cancel or reschedule. It's no big deal, it happens. We're in any business that books appointments gets cancellations. Okay, the dentist, why they overbook because they know some people are going to cancel. Happens in Mary Kay too. And usually half is going to reschedule or cancel. And then the other half is going to hold. So if you want to book, if you want to hold four parties in a month, one a week, you need to book eight, and then half are going to fall off, and you'll hold the four. And so we've got this program in our national area and in our unit called Party Time 8 and Party Time 12. And the challenge is to finish a party time eight or a party time 12 by the fifth of the month and by the 15th of the month. And there's actually a track at I'm not for sure I put it in this packet. It might be in the packet too, you guys. I bet that it is. We're actually gonna talk more about this later. And um, yes, it is. Here it is. We're gonna cover this a little bit more in the fourth session, um, but Using this tracking and focusing on eight or a free time 12 by the 5th and 15th of the month will allow you to stay consistent in holding at least one party a week, if not more, if you choose to book more to hold more. Okay, so more information about that coming soon. And by the way, party time eight means you have eight parties on the date book to hold four. Party time 12 means you have 12 bookings on the date book to hold six in a month or six in a two week time frame, depending on what your goal is. But have, have a habit. Have a habit where you're weaving it into your life, even 15 minutes a day or even five calls a day makes a difference and allows you to consistently be holding parties. And remember, when you're consistently holding parties, you're consistently making money. So let's move on to booking a power start. And before I talk about booking the power start, I do want to mention a little challenge that we give to new consultants that helps you to kind of get the word out that you're selling and helps you to take up a few of your first orders and it's called the 36 and 36 challenge this is the worksheet right here um, which is sort of a tracking sheet that you can use and it is, is that you would have 36 people try some products in three to six days so 36 and 36 is 36 people in three to six days. Samples it. You've got mascara with little applicator wands. You've got satin hands packets of the set where they try all three of the products in the satin hands set. You've got microdermabrasion set. Six of those in your starter kit where they do the refine and then they do the pore minimizer after you have those are the four items that you have people try. And this is really easy because you can just do it on the go. Um, when you see your friends or your family or your coworkers or your neighbors, you would say like, okay, my director challenged me to get 36 people to try this product. And so I've got some really fun samples for you. Um, maybe give them one or let them choose which one of the four they want to try. If they can try them on the spot, I think that's ideal. So you can get their feedback. And then they sign your tracking sheet for being one of the 36 i'd like it love it or want it and there's little discounts they can get with each of those products if they purchase it in that three to six day time frame that you're working on this challenge and so it can help you take up some of your first orders 
if they can't try it on the spot, which my operation is one of those ones, it's because they need me to give a rinse. If they can't try it on the spot, send them home with the sample, but then the important part is to set up a time the next day to follow up after they've had a chance to use it, and then you get their, their opinion about the product and see if it's something they're interested in purchasing. Great segue into booking them for your power start. Okay, we challenge new consultants to do a power start, which is booking 12 parts. Remember, half will cancel or reschedule. So you're booking 12 within a 30 day time frame to hold six. Or some people like to start with a perfect start, which is booking eight to hold four. So you've got those two options of what you want to do in your first to jumpstart your business. And so doing this 36 and 36 challenge is a great way to say, well, hey, I'm actually working on this other goal. My director challenged me to hold six parties this month. You get a $10 gift card just for letting me like bother your face and practicing on you, and you actually get an additional $10 for every friend you bring up. So if your interest works better for you, would it be a weeknight or a weekend? Okay, so you're going to also be um, using this as an opportunity to possibly book them for your power start or your perfect start. Um, and so let's talk about the power start, you guys, and how to actually book that. And this is so important that I actually did make a separate video that when you when it comes time to maybe book your power start if you're not quite ready yet or if you want a refresher on how to do this or a refresher on the script you can actually watch that power start video um, which is shorter in length and it'll be a great refresher for you um okay so let's jump into the script that you're going to use you don't even have to like figure out what to say because we're going to tell you what to say and in the script is really it's been practiced in the field it, it's been effective like we know that it works because we've tried it so what i want to say before we get into the wording is that um really this business is all about follow-up okay there's fortune in the follow-up and they've done they've actually done studies that like 80 percent of sales are made in like the sixth, seventh, and eighth, and ninth attempt. Whereas, like, I think only 2% of sales are made in the first attempt. And this is not just in Mary Kay, you guys. This is just in, in sales and marketing and studies that they've done in all kinds of businesses that most, most sales aren't made on the first attempt. And I think that's where sometimes we drop the balls. We reach out one time and we don't hear back and then we cross her name off the list. But when you, you learn to follow up well and effectively, you can prevent from having cracks. Because how many times have you even like gotten a catalog or somebody's called you about something, or maybe you've been invited to something on Facebook and you interest that or that event looks fun. I might want to go to that, but then you forget about it. And you had an interest but it just sort of got lost in your email or lost in your texts or lost on Facebook and you just never ended up committing. If had someone followed up with you, the, the likelihood of you making the purchase or saying yes would have increased. Okay, but upon initial seeing something or seeing a sale or seeing an invitation to something, we don't know we normally don't make a decision and say yes or reply or respond. Not because we're not interested, I think it's human nature <laughs> just to not make the spot. Somebody needs to follow up with us and then we need to follow up with our people. And so with booking your power start, here's a system I'm going to recommend. And this wording that I'm about to go over, you guys, it's in your packet. So don't worry about catching every word I'm going to say because you're going to get it in, in your packet. And so what I would recommend is if you're a little bit strapped for contacts to maybe start with 30, 30 people. If you're feeling like, mm, I don't really know a lot of people, I don't have like a long contact list, start with at least 30. If you have a larger contact list, maybe double that and start. And, and that is actually one of your, your first initial steps and one of the challenges that we give you um, in this workbook is to, to, is to make a contact list. 
and to really know who are in your life. There's space to do it on in the workbook where you can just make a list. And I know phone, I know you put your friends up on Facebook, but pull those people out of those places and put them down black and white on the sheet so you can really see who you know, who you have to reach out to um, to start um, marketing your business and selling and booking with these people. Okay, so start with the contact list. When booking your power start, again, if you, you don't have a lot of contacts, maybe start with 30. If you have more, maybe start with 60. And you're going to be dividing these people groups. So if you have 30, you would do 10 and 10. So 10, 10, and 10. If you had a list of 60, you would do 20, 20, and 20. Um, and you, of course, you can do more than that. And so you're, and let's say you have 10. On day one, you're going to reach out to the first group of 10 or 20 people. And you're going to leave for a voicemail. That's the majority of what you're going to be doing. Not a lot of people are, are answering live and they're okay. You're going to leave a voice and follow up with a text. And then on day two, you're going to call that group of that second group of 10 people. Voicemail. And then on day three, you're going to call that, that third group of 10 people voicemail text. Okay, so in three days, you've reached out to 30 people or 60 people if you do have a long contact list. And then on day four, you go back to, does that make sense? One on day one, group two on day two, group three on day three. On day four, you go one, because to remember, fortune is in the follow-up. And you probably haven't heard from any of those first 10 people that you called on day one. Because again, people don't respond and reply right away. They need to be followed up with, just like you need to be followed up with. And so here's what your voicemail would sound like. And I think it's really important to have your own voice and your own style and your own like language. And so feel free to um, inflect your own personality into this. I'm natural, but... Um, as long as you're following the core of the script. Okay, so here we go. So you'd say, hey, it's Leah, and for two reasons. Okay, so first of all, I got a little crazy and I started my own Mary Kay business recently. And then secondly, my, my director actually challenged me to book my first 12 puberty sessions. And, and I thought of you, I thought of you because it's been a while since we've connected and I just thought this would be a good excuse and a fun way to reconnect and get together. Okay, and so on the script, it actually has a blank space. And it, it in parentheses, it says sincere compliment. Okay, I thought of you because, and then you're giving a sincere compliment or, or you want to be sincere with it. Uh, maybe she's really good with her makeup and really like skincare is into products. So maybe you say like, I thought of you because I know like you love and I would just get, love to get your opinion of what you think about the Mary Kay product line. Okay, so it could be something like that. But just why, for whatever reason you thought of her, say something sincere. And then you go on to say, you get a $10 gift card to spend just for letting me borrow your face and for letting me get my practice in since I just, and then actually what makes it kind of fun is if you bring friends, you get a $10 additional gift card for every friend that you bring up to 50 free. So you can actually leave you some free product. Um, at your appointment. So, hey, text me back and let me know what you think. Details through text. And don't hear back from you. Um, I'll go ahead and follow up in a couple of days. Hey, if I don't, um, or if I don't, you are giving yourself permission to follow up so that when you do follow up, she is open to it because you told her that you would and so it when you do follow up it doesn't seem like oh she's calling me again it's like oh yeah she told me she follow up good I kind of forgot that she left me that message I'm glad she followed up okay so that's a really important line now if you do actually catch her live um, you would say pretty much the same thing but then you would go right into booking the appointment same script but then say well hey I'm holding my appointments on Mondays and Saturdays or, hey, I'm holding my appointments on some weeknights and weekends. What works better for you, like a weeknight or a weekend? So you would go into book two options. Always want to only give two, maybe three options. 
Don't say what works well for you this month. When women have too many choices, they can't make a decision. And then they just end up saying no. But if they have, if they're given two options, usually they can discern like, okay, you know what? We need to on the weekend. And then she says, okay, babe. Then you say, okay, do you want to do it at lunchtime or more of an evening appointment? So you're giving her her next two options. And then she chooses an option. Okay, and so that's an effective way to book is by offering choices and options, specific choices. Voicemail. And then either right after you leave the voicemail or if possible later that day. And I think it's better later in the day. Because she'll often hear the voicemail maybe at work, and then you're sent, and she's like, oh, yeah, and then to get back to her. So it's kind of like a little reminder later that day. And all the text says is like, hey, Emily, I left you a quick voicemail. I wanted to make sure you received it. You were on top of my, let me know what you think. Um, if I don't hear back, I'll follow up in a couple of days. So that's what the text says. And remember, this is in the workbook, so you, you're going to have a resource to find these words. And so then you're doing the same thing the next day and the next day with the next groups of people. Four. In day four, you're going back to your first group of people. And with the voice, be simple. You say, hey, Emily, it's Leah again. Hey, I just wanted to follow up really quickly about the pampering session and the gift card that I have for you that I, I left a message about a couple of days ago. Um, I'd love to get your opinion of the products and get some of my practice in. Or um, I would love to reconnect and catch up. It's been way too long. Inserting maybe your own little mind with this about, about her. Um, I know you're super busy and so and the province to think about it. And so if I don't hear back, I'll follow up maybe one more time later this week. And then you're texting her. Ideally, maybe later that day and saying, hey, just wanted to check back real quick about my voicemail. Um, I didn't hear back from you, so I wanted to make sure you got it. Can't wait to fill you in on the details. Okay, and then you're doing that the next day with group two and the next day with group three. Then it's day seven. And day seven is your final attempt with that very first group, if you haven't heard back. And this is often when you'll finally make a connection is on day seven. And so on day seven, again, you're leaving a voicemail saying like, hey girl, it's Leah again. I just wanted to follow up with you one last time about the pampering session and the goal that I'm working on. And so I know you're busy. So if I don't hear back, like maybe a couple of months from now, we can, we can revisit this. Um, it's busy for you, so hope you're doing well. So you're kind of leaving her a closure voicemail. And then you're leaving her kind of a closure text where it says, hey, Emily, just wanted to text you one last time to connect about the pampering session. Like, hey, text me back if you're interested and we can go over details. If I don't hear back, I'll just assume you're busy and I'll follow up in a couple of months. Bringing closure to that. But still leaving the door open to maybe a different season. And, and then in a couple months, you're, you're gonna follow back up because you guys, you know, People are maybe having a baby and they haven't even had a chance to check their voicemail because they just had a new baby or they're getting married or they're graduating from college. You know, all kinds of stuff can be going on in their life that could prevent them from saying yes in that moment. But a few months later, could very well be, be interested in the opportunity to get together with you. Okay, so you, you follow that system and it's a really, really effective system to follow up and book your first power start with your friends and family. Now, when you get outside of your friends and family, you will start calling referrals. And with referrals, it's a little bit different. The script does change a little bit, but there is a, actually a separate video we created that's about calling your referrals. Uh, a, a, a script that's similar to this, the structure of follow-up, but then uses words you would use with somebody you don't know. Okay, but we don't need to think about that right now. Just know that you have that resource and that video to watch when you're ready to start reaching out to referrals that you get at your parties. Okay, so next topic, my friends, is coaching. And we're going to talk a little bit about coaching and, and wrap up the video with this. And so myself would always say that a class with booking is for coaching. 
And what, how you want to think about coaching is just communication. You're just having effective communication about expectations and about what she can expect. And the more effective the communication, the more successful the party is going to be for you and then also for her and her guests. Really great positive experience. We want it to be a positive experience for her and the friends she's going to have coming. And when we can communicate effectively, which is coaching, it's just a better experience for everyone involved. Okay, so that's how I want you to think about coaching. This is really effective communication. And so the first um, step in coaching is you, usually we, what we recommend doing is, is booking her for her date and time and then turning to a party. And so you might establish a with your best girlfriend and something like, and, hey, you can actually invite friends. And it makes it a little bit more fun. And when you have friends there, you earn an additional $10 gift card for every friend who comes over 18, up to 50. Okay, so you're turning the facial into a party by her bringing friends. And then the, probably the number one most important part of coaching is getting the guest list. And that's what we do at Mary Kay. We get a list of people that she wants to invite to the party and we reach out to them and, and invite them. And there's a couple reasons we do this. First of all, you just wanna make sure people get invited. Um, sometimes the hostess can book a party and have complete intention to invite her friends and family and then forget. And then the day before the party, she's like, crap, I forgot to invite people. And then she cancels on you uh, because she forgot to invite people. Uh, she tells you nobody can come. She forgot to invite her friends and family. And then there's a cancellation. And so when you can get that list and make sure people are invited on the front end, there's more likelihood of having a successful party and having a good turnout. And so let me, let me go through the script of how you get the guest list. And this is in your workbook. This is initial coaching to get the guest list. That's what it's titled. You have this wording, but I want you to hear me say it. So let's say you book her and she, you know that she wants to invite friends. The next thing you would say is like, okay, so I don't want this to be any work for you. I just want to take care of everything so it's not a hassle for you. I've got these cute invitations that I can send to your girlfriends so they can have like just an official invitation. Um, and so all I need from you is a list of like 15 to 20 of your most favorite girlfriends or your most favorite people. All of them will come, so don't worry. Um, usually when you invite 15 to 20, you'll get about five people to show up. And that helps you to max out the gift card that you can earn by having your five there. So, so that's, that's kind of what you would say to her. And, and you preface it with things like, you know, I don't want this to be a hassle for you, and I'll take care of all the work, and I've got a cute invitation, I'm going to send them. All I need from you is a list of 15 to 20 girlfriends. And most keeps you their, their contact list. And so you're saying that to her initially, but then also you are talking about uh, having a confirmation call the very next day. So let's like role play here. So you book her list and how all you need from her is a list of 15 to 20 friends. And then the next thing you would say is, okay, what we need to do is just follow up tomorrow real quick just to confirm it so you have a chance to double check your date book. And then at that point, I'll get your list of friends and I'll start texting them some invitations. Um, so there. So, hey, when's a good time to follow up tomorrow? Like around lunchtime or after dinner? Okay, so you're asking for her guest list and you're setting a time to follow up the very next day. Even if the party's not for two, for two weeks from, from today, you're still talking to her the next day to confirm it and get her guest list so you can get things in motion for preparing for the party. Now, another thing is to encourage her to go ahead and um, go ahead and, and invite her friends. And you want to say that, like, you go ahead and reach out to your friends. Like, it's better coming from you. But I also want to make sure they, you know, they get an invitation and I don't want you to have to worry about it. Um, but you, you can go ahead and start reaching out to your friends. So you, you want her to reach out too. And then we used to mail postcards in today's world of technology that a cute just flyer invitation is totally appropriate. Pick Collage is a great picture app where you can create these. 
And I think there's an example on my website too, where you just text people the image so that they have um, else on that little image and it's cute and it looks fun. Um, some other options for getting the guest list because some people do hesitate on handing out their friends names and numbers. So let me talk about some other options. You could create a Facebook event and you're going to invite the hostess and then you're going to ask her to add her 15 to 20 friends and you can post the invitation in the group and you can actually private message the invitation in Messenger and get it and they can get it that way. You can even leave a voice text and a voice message in Messenger too and send them a voice invitation. So that's an option if she's a little hesitant on handing out cell phone numbers of her friends. Another option is to even record a 30 second little selfie video inviting them to the event. And it would sound something like this. You would say like, hey, this is Leah. I am Susie Q's uh, friend who's gonna do the Mary Kay party on Friday. And I just wanted to introduce myself so you know that I'm like a real person and just let you know that we're gonna do this really nice hand treatment about 10 minutes before the party starts. And then everybody who comes and it's just gonna be a super chill, relaxing night. There's no obligation to buy at all. Just come for a complimentary facial and makeover and for a fun girls night in. I hope, I hope I get to meet you then. Okay, so you're recording a video that she can then reference if she's wanting to do all the inviting. And then just seeing your face and hearing a little bit about the party, you guys, it goes a long way in people wanting to come and committing to come. And then you could even text that video out to them. If she does give you a guest list or even post it in the Facebook event group. Um, route. So there are uh, different options of getting a guest list, but you just want to make sure people are invited effectively and well so that you can count on a good turnout. Um, okay, so that remember that next, that 24 hour later phone call that you're going to have to get a guest list. This is also the time that I talk about food and kids. Um, those are important things that you want to communicate about so that she knows the expectations and everything runs smoothly. Um, you really want to have the food afterwards. And so here you say, okay, so it's really nice to provide like just light friends. Um, but here's what we normally do. We normally wait till afterwards to get the food out. Now it's fine to serve drinks in the beginning, but let's go ahead and just do the facials and then afterwards everybody out and make their faces are on. And this helps it to just um run more smoothly because it's kind of hard to like eat and do facials at the same time. It makes it kind of messy. And then it kind of gives people a reason to hang around and stay afterwards. So, so yeah, if you don't mind, let's save the food till the end. Also, um, we always like to make this and just girls night in. So I don't know if your friends have kids or not. Um, but maybe you know, maybe communicate that it's just like a fun girl sitting in and that you can get a babysitter or you can home with dad that night so they can really have like a relaxing, enjoyable night away from the kids. Okay, so you want to mention those two things because it's hard to have a successful Mary Kay party when there is food. It's hard to start on because nobody wants to people kind of hungry or they bring food to the table and it's super messy and they're distracted. And then they, they don't have a reason to hang out afterwards. And after the party is when you're doing your individual consultations. And so you kind of want to give people a reason to hang out afterwards while you're meeting with everybody individually. And then kids, we love the kids. I love children. Just not at a Mary Kay party. Um, so it, it, it's tough to help women feel relaxed and pampered when they're out. And it's just a distraction and I've done it before and I've made it work but it's more ideal you guys to just have it adult only women only to really like have a nice pampering relaxing experience and even little babies even little babies in car seats can, can be a distraction and especially for the mom it takes away that that relaxation that pampering when she's um, taking care of the baby. So if at all possible, you can make it adult only. I think uh, that's the best way to go with this. Um, okay, so the other thing I wanted to mention 
is often, you know, when you do this follow voicemail and text, you're often going to hear back from people through text. Um, and so that that's normal and that's fine. And you can text that script and end up, uh, end up coming up with a date. But then you want to switch from text to phone when it is time to confirm it. Okay, and, and, and pre-profile and go over some details. And so once you get to the point where you picked a date, then you would say, well, hey, let's go over some of these details. And I also want to ask you questions about your skin and makeup preferences so I can come really prepared. Let's confirm tomorrow the evening better for you. So when it comes time in the text conversation to do that, you do want to switch from text to making that actual live phone call to go over those things because it's just easier and more effective. So, um, just to hear her voice and know that she's not some creepy guy. And, <laughs> uh, and I guess this is more when you're, you're reaching out to people you don't know. With, with your girlfriends, obviously you're going to know who they are. But you do want to have a switch from a text conversation to an actual real live conversation. Okay, so let's talk about a couple more things, you guys. Um, let's talk briefly about the hostess program. What I've been saying is a $10 gift card just for her and then 10 for each of her friends up to 50. And so that I think is the simplest, easiest way to, to offer some incentive for her getting together with you. Because you always want to offer some incentive and, and just as a thank you for helping you with your practice. But then there will come, come a time where, and, and at least in my experience, there came this time where I needed to increase. And I increased to this program that I used for years and years and years, still to this day. It's $100 free when you party with me. And this is on my website. And it's sort of more there right now when you are booking friends and family that you need to offer that much for free. Um, because they're, they're going to do it because they want to help you. But there will come a time where you're getting more into referrals. People that you don't know or people that you don't know. And that is the incentive. And that $100 free when you party with me, that is on my website. That you can save on your phone and even print on postcards and use at your parties. Okay, so I just wanted to really briefly mention that. And then let's talk about booking from bookings. Um, this with, and we're going to try to get through this fairly quickly here. Um, one of the most skill that you can learn to do, and to do from day one, from your bookings. So you go to a party, that party falls off your date book, but you're adding one or two or three or four more parties. That, that night and the guests who were there. And if I had to choose one skill, most vast would be it. It's booking from bookings. Master the skill in the beginning and you are unstoppable. Because it's like a snowball effect. You go to a party, it falls off, you add it two more. You go to the next party, it falls off, you add one more. You go to the next party, it falls off your date book, you add three more. And it just keeps you in business. Pulling. Um, and it's the most effective, effective way to build your business is booking from your bookings. And so very specifically, we do that right now. Um, and it all starts at the very beginning of the party. And this script is in the flip chart. The flip chart is your guide to having a party. We're going to talk about it in session number two. It is a guide and like images that you're literally going to use at your party you on track with the party and help you know what to do and what to say. And so the very first page on her is about things from your bookings. What we go over this way is the two appointments that I offer to my Mary Kay customers. Today, the guests are just doing like basic skincare and a basic dash out the door look. Um, but just for the sake of time, we just teach you like a basic color look that's fun. It's going to brighten up your eyes. You can do it in less than two minutes. But then your hostess, the hostess, she gets the extra perk of getting a customized look. So I actually brought a customized look for her that she's going to try. She also gets to try more advanced skincare. She's going to sample my fruit and 
and a couple other more advanced skincare products that we have. And then I'm going to teach her how to apply her makeup using professional brushes. Now, you guys don't get to do that tonight, and you're not going to look quite as good as our hostess is at the end of this, but you have the option to book a follow-up appointment where you get your own custom look. You get to try a more advanced skincare, and you get to learn how to use professional brushes, too. Everyone does have that option, and we'll talk about that in a little bit. Okay, so you can have a follow-up appointment right at the beginning, telling them what they get at the follow-up appointment and sort of romancing what the hostess gets to try um, because she is at her follow-up appointment, and that's just a perk of being a hostess. Even if it, it isn't her follow-up appointment, it's a perk that we do that they get to try extra things. And so then you say, okay, we're going to play a game. I've got this eyeliner here. This is, this is a marker, but you're going to pretend this is an eyeliner. And you're going to say, I'm going to start with Sally. And every time I say follow-up appointment, you have to pass the eyeliner to the next person. And so what happens is this, it sort of reminds them to remind you to say follow-up appointment. Because they'll, they'll sometimes like say things, say it so the eyeliner is passed to them. Because whoever ends up with it at the end gets to take the eyeliner home. Also, it reminds you to mention the follow-up appointment and the chart prompts you to mention follow-up appointment. You want to say that word like seven to ten times so they're very familiar with what it is and what they get there and excitement for them booking follow-up appointment. Because um, then in the individual consultation, when you meet with everybody at the end one-on-one, -on -one, that's how you're going to be booking her party is by booking her follow-up appointment on the spot. And so if you don't say follow-up appointment or you don't like set it up on the front end like that, it doesn't really work in the individual consultation to book her follow-up appointment because she's confused. And so you want to make sure people know what it is and passing the eyeliner is an easy way to do that. Also, you're going to play deal or no deal. And I don't have my cards here. Ah! Okay. I don't think I do. Okay, so deal or no deal is this uh, fun game, and you just have envelopes. That all, that's all I have. There's pretty colored envelopes. There's maybe 10 or 12 of them. And then inside each envelope is a little card with a property. And you can print the cards on their website. And you stick one in each envelope. And at the very end, you uh, are going to play this game deal. And it's actually on the party sheet that you're using at the party, so it prompts you to play it. Because on number, here's the party sheet, you guys. We're going to train on this in another session. But number three, it says, for your second appointment, you can get your own customized look using our professional set. When you share it with friends, you earn hostess credit, circle one, for no deal. And so it has that, the game is more about you just telling them about it. You say, okay, guys, we're going to play a game here. It's called Deal or No Deal, just like the TV show. And so I've got these envelopes. And you hold your envelopes, and you're like, in every envelope, I've got a free product that you can get at your follow-up appointment. And so everybody gets an envelope. There's no cheating inside of it yet. Everyone gets one. And so here's how this works. You're either a deal or a no deal. And deal is like, yes, I want this free product in this envelope, and I'm interested in a follow-up appointment, and I'd love to get together and uh, own custom look and try some more products. So yeah, like deal. I want to get together again. That's, that's a deal. And you kind of want to be repetitive with it because people aren't paying attention or listening, so you just want to be a little bit repetitive. And so that's a deal. And then no deal is like, no, I don't want to learn my custom look, and I don't want to find out what's free in here, and they don't want to get together with you again. So that's no deal. And so we're going to go around and learn no deal. And if you're deal, you may keep your envelope and see what you get for free at your follow-up appointment. If you're no deal, you, you don't get to look. And you might be passing up like a free car or a free vacation or something. Not really. So they pass out and you go one by one to each person or no deal. And if there's deal, you celebrate and you get everybody to celebrate with you. Like, yay, let's clap for Lori. Yay, she's deal. If there's no deal, you prompt everybody to say, aww. Um, and you do that just so it's not too awkward because people kind of laugh when things like, aww. Uh, but it's no big deal, and you just go on to the next person. And that's a fun way to get a feel for who, who wants to book a party and who doesn't. And then in the individual consultation, 
your time with her. Okay, and then let's finish with the individual consultation script, you guys. Um, that's an afterwards. We're going to briefly go into this, but then we're going to go into it in more detail and in more depth as we go through these four sessions. Um, but the script that you use is right here. This is mastering the individual consultation. And it goes through every part of what you say uh, during that individual consultation here is about booking to future parties. So, you start with selling the product for everyone. So then the next thing you do in the individual consultation is you book two future parties. And it's usually pretty easy, you guys, because you can see her party sheet, and she's circle deal or no deal, and you also know whether she took, took the envelope or didn't and said deal or no deal. And so for the deals, it's super easy. You just pick a time, and you say, okay, for your follow-up appointment, I've got Thursdays or Saturdays. Or you say, I do some weeknights and some weekends. And you just, again, you offer her two or three options. What works better for you? Um, and then you go through and you narrow it down to a date and time. Within the next two weeks, you always want to book in a tight two-week time frame. When you start to get it further out than two weeks, it's more likely to cancel. Um, so you select, and then you select a date with her, and then you turn it into a party. And the, the fact that, it, that she may want to hold a party may have already come up, um, or it may not have. She may just be thinking, okay, I want my follow-up appointment. And the, then once you pick that date, you turn that patient into a party by saying, okay, so um, it's kind of fun when you bring friends and you get credit for bringing friends. You can actually earn some free stuff. And so what do you think about inviting friends? Um, you can only treat our hostesses really well. And so you just want to see if she's open to doing that. Um, if she is, usually the fabulous friends, from playing the fabulous friends game throughout the party, which we're going to cover that later, she usually has it written down, and that's, that's her guest list. And if she doesn't, you give her the opportunity to go off the fabulous friends game, and that we can start inviting in them. Now, no deal, or she's a circle no deal. Um, you, you want to use your, your intuition. And if you really like her and think you could book her, I, I would maybe try and just say like, oh, you know, I was hoping we could get together for a follow-up appointment. So I see that you circled like no deal. So would you ever be open for open to that? Or would it be okay if I followed up next month to see if you wanted to get together? She's warm and person. I would maybe attempt to book her even if she said no deal, you guys. And then another option is if she said no deal, is to invite her to your meeting. Um, and so you might say like, hey, I know like you're not really into the second appointment, um, but model portfolio workshop, and you're gonna learn more about that in another video about how to invite people to that, that you, that's a or flip chart script me and just to get your facial and make over it's a really fun girls night out and get a $10 gift card just for me so and it, I know maybe a party isn't your thing or a follow-up appointment but would you be open and what do you think about coming as my guest on a Tuesday night or whatever your meeting night is so that's another option to see people again who maybe aren't into having a party or, or having to get into their home okay so that is essentially your bookings. Um, and there's a lot of things in here that, um, that are gonna support you with this that we are gonna go over in the videos that are coming next. Okay, so more coming soon. And then the challenge with this section, the booking and coaching section, is to make your contact list. There's a page in here that you can start making your list. And all you have to do is text the picture to me to get credit for it or buy. And then um, the next thing you do is you fill out these questions. Now that you finish this section, fill out these questions and then box a picture to me about that. That's how you get credit for your kink boot camp work that helps you to earn this really cute Mary Kay pendant necklace. This is not it, but it kind of 
this actually. It's gold and it's a very cute. It's got a little uh, diamond. Really, really cute and a great way to advertise your business. Um, all right, you guys, that covers it. I'll see you in session two. Have a great night.